How can such a modestly sized group of commandos take over a tanker the size of a blue whale? Unfortunately, what makes this Moby Dick-sized tanker a marvel of modern engineering and geospatial navigation also makes it vulnerable to hijacking. Since the ship is controlled via computer, it doesn't take many hijackers to take it over. This foreshadows a major theme of MGS2. The power of the individual in the digital era is potentially unlimited, but this power has dual use. Nobody wields absolute control over it. Very little stands in the way of hackers, criminals, and yes, terrorists from taking advantage of all our nice technology and repurposing it for their own ends. This unexpected alteration to the mission complicates things considerably. Snake decides to follow the original plan for now, but if these mysterious Russian operators with their kasatka and their Russian gear try hijacking Metal Gear Ray as he fears they might, Snake will abandon his new career as a photographer and intervene the old-fashioned way, with force. With the foundation laid, it's here MGS2 finally gives you the reins. Right away, it's clear a world of improvements have been made on the foundation of its predecessor. Indeed, the degree to which MGS2 refines and expands on the core mechanics of the original is difficult to overstate. To begin with, the camera has been completely overhauled. There's finally precision aiming in first person mode. The tilted overhead shot from MGS1, which made it difficult to see the enemy and anticipate his movements, has been totally scrapped. Now the action is framed within closer, more dynamic angles and shots, which not only give the game a more cinematic feel, but also makes the entire experience easier, more enjoyable, and more amenable to tactical espionage operations. For example, putting your back against a wall causes the camera to enter what MGS2 calls corner view. Now something like this existed in MGS1, but now pressing the R2 or L2 buttons in corner view allows Snake to peek out from behind cover. Holding the attack button, square, causes him to dart out from behind the corner with his gun drawn. This can be used to quickly snap into an offensive stance, fire off a round, and snap back to safety without detection. It's not just the camera either, even the analog stick functionality has been greatly improved. Its new responsive pressure sensitivity enables a range of movement types from quiet walking to full speed running to even rolling. The days of clunky imprecise snake are long gone. But of all the welcome changes, the biggest improvement is in how much further MGS2 takes the concept of emergent reactivity and environmental feedback of merging together games and movies. The design of your typical MGS1 level gave players little in the way of direct control. You could manipulate the guards with noise, footprints, or by simply killing them, but that was about as far as the player could modify the puzzle or use the environment as presented. Now, however, your decisions have a much greater degree of impact. For starters, lights and radios can now be shot out, while staying in the rain too long causes Snake to catch a cold. Now your shadow alone can give your presence away, while environmental shadows can double as a form of camouflage. This level of detail extends to your weaponry as well. Your starter pistol, a Beretta M9, like the one Snake used in the MSX era, modified by Otacon to shoot non-lethal tranquilizer darts, will put sentries to sleep faster or slower depending on where they're hit. You can even shoot the wall to draw their attention and hold the guard up if his back is turned. Just don't let him hear the click of a dry magazine or see you without the gun equipped afterwards. Even fully loaded though, the M9 has a few important drawbacks. Otacon's modifications disabled its semi-automatic function. The tranquilizer darts don't deliver enough kickback for the weapon to cock itself as designed. This causes the slide to lock after the weapon's discharged, so you'll have to manually prime it over and over again after every shot, almost like a bolt action or a musket. But that's not to say these drawbacks represent flaws in the game design. Being restricted to the M9 for the opening, it turns out, not only gets the point across that Snake's job no longer calls for lethal wet work operations, the inclusion of non-lethal arms introduces new gameplay features as well, and doesn't overwhelm you with uh, all the new additions at once. By having to rely exclusively on the Trank Pistol, you're forced to learn for yourself the fundamentals of these new features. You're teaching yourself how to play, 
Since taking a sentry down no longer kills them, their bodies don't simply disappear. Not unless you help them overboard, that is. This means when and where you engage the enemy takes on new tactical weight. Bodies have to be moved or stored in lockers, and shootouts are to be avoided unless absolutely necessary. The ineffectiveness of the modified M9 against multiple opponents gives you not only a narrative, but a gameplay motivation to avoid detection. Speaking of encounters, MGS2 adds a new post-alert phase where the enemy actively tries to hunt you down. To ensure the enemy AI and behavior during the so-called evasion sequences felt realistic, Mr. Motosata Mori, the chief military advisor during MGS1, took on a more involved role. All this research and attention to detail ensures that MGS2 plays as realistically as its on-site photography ensured that it looked. Not only has the sheer number of tactical considerations and options increased exponentially, this opening up of possible playstyles made the success of any one approach hard to predict, which gives the player a reason to experiment and a means of personalizing the experience. Altogether, these changes introduce a necessity for improvisational thinking, which increases the overall suspense dramatically. To play MGS2, you'll need to develop an ability to think both on your feet and out of the box, even under pressure. As Snake makes his way into the ship interior, you have to figure out a route to the objective area yourself, providing the perfect opportunity for practicing some of this improvising and experimentation along the way. Finding a path upward is your first real trial as Snake, and it's yet another great example of the game letting the player figure out the mechanics and controls not by tutorial, but by experimenting on our own, getting down the necessary muscle memory, and effectively teaching ourselves how to play. Once you reach the control room, Snake completes the first of his mission objectives. You discover the tanker's destination, the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Snake, did you find out where that ship is headed? No, I'm looking at it. 35 degrees longitude, latitude around 58. More than 500 miles off the coast of the Bermudas, out in the middle of the Atlantic. So the prototype is ready for solo testing. It's basically combat worthy. If the purpose is to field test the new Metal Gear prototype, this suggests Ray, unlike every known variety of Metal Gear to date, could be amphibious. A theory made all the more plausible by the fact Ray is exclusively a top secret project of the Marine Corps. Considering the Marines rarely get opportunities for sea based operations anymore, it could be the Ray project represents a tactical gambit. The Marines, it seems, are in direct competition with the other armed forces wings of the Department of Defense. Ray might just be the thing they need to increase the Marine Corps' importance within the military overall to modernize their ranks and better distinguish themselves from other outfits. But Snake can barely finish relaying this information to Otacon before you're interrupted by some noise from outside. This draws your attention to a lone member of the hijackers out on deck who's distracted by a radio conversation of her own. The soldier's demeanor and appearance stands out from the rest. Clearly, she's no grunt. Seeing as she's isolated and distracted, Snake, sensing an opportunity for some human or human intelligence work, moves in to listen in on her conversation and then confront and interrogate her. But Olga, as she's named, isn't exactly in a talkative mood. Freeze! Hands over your head, now! Toss your gun overboard, slowly. Show your face. 
you men? You're all the same. Who are you? But Olga, as she's called, isn't exactly in a talkative mood. It stopped me. Not too shabby, is it? New York, I mean. She gets to drop on Snake, and just like that, you're thrown into the first boss fight of MGS2. 